we know that the job of the CPU scheduler is to allocate the CPU to one of the processes available in the ready queue. So it will select from the ready queue one process and allocate the CPU to it. Now this ready queue it can be ordered in various ways and that depends upon the scheduling algorithm. So let us see when the CPU scheduler would be required to take a decision. Now if you remember the state diagram of the processes, whenever the process which was running has gone to a wait state, that means now the CPU is available. Suppose that process was P1, P1 was running and now it has gone to a wait state either waiting for an event or an input output. So now the CPU on which the process was running, now it is available. So to maximize this, now this CPU will be allocated to one of the processes which are available in the ready queue. So this is one scenario. Another scenario could be that a process which was in the running state has gone back to the ready state. This could be in case of an interrupt. So an interrupt was received and now the process has gone from the running to the ready state. So again the CPU is available for execution and now the CPU can again be assigned to some other process. Another scenario could be that a process which was in the wait state has now completed its task, done the input output or waited for the event and now that event is complete, now it has gone back into the ready state. When it is in the ready state, it will be available in the ready queue. So whenever the CPU has to be uh, allocated next, one of the processes from the ready queue would be allocated to the CPU. The last possibility is that a process which was running has now terminated and so this CPU now is again available over here and the scheduler will again have to take a decision of getting one process from the ready queue and allocating the CPU to it. Now the scheduling can be of two types, preemptive or non-preemptive. In preemptive scheduling, if the CPU is allocated to a process, the process can be interrupted even before it has completed. So suppose a process was running on the CPU and it has not finished its job, it has not finished its CPU burst, but still the system can take away the CPU from the process and assign to some other process. Now this can result in a race condition when data is shared amongst process. So suppose process P1 was running on the CPU and it was updating some data and that data was shared with some other process P2. Now if the CPU is taken away from P1 while it was updating this data, the data now that is being used by P2 will be not in a consistent state. So to prevent this kind of a race condition, we have to use preventive mechanisms. We will discuss more on race con conditions and these preventive mechanisms in later videos. The other kind of scheduling is the non-preemptive or the cooperative scheduling. Here, once the CPU is allocated to a process, the process will keep the CPU until it releases it either by terminating or by switching to a wait state. So suppose a process was running, now that process will keep on using the CPU till the time it terminates or it has to go for an input output or for some other event and it switches to the wait state. So Till that, till that time that process is using the CPU, the system cannot take away the CPU from that process. This is 
non preemptive scheduling once it has been decided by the scheduler that out of the ready queue so if there are a number of processes which are in the ready queue say p1 p2 p3 and so on and the scheduler has decided that process p1 will be given the cpu this is the job of the scheduler once that decision has been made there is another module which is called the dispatcher dispatcher will now give control of the cpu to process selected by the cpu scheduler so now the ta the task of the context switch and handing over the cpu to the new process will be the job of the dispatcher so earlier p0 was executing now the scheduler has decided that p1 will execute so now here is the job of the dispatcher that it will save the state of the process which was running p0 into its process control block it will restore the state of the new process coming in and then hand over the cpu to that new process so this part of the context switching this is done by the dispatcher and when the dispatcher is running you should note that this is a module of the operating system so here in this part it will be in the kernel mode so all this job that is being done is in the kernel mode once this job is done and the address of the program counter value and the registers have been loaded uploaded or restored for the new process which is coming in now the system will switch into the user mode and the new process will now start executing only after the system has shift shifted into the user mode then the system will go to the proper location in the user program and restart that program so all this time that is taken by the dispatcher to stop one process and start the another process running is referred to as a dispatch latency and as you can see that it is required that the dispatch latency should be as minimum as possible so that the system can quickly switch from one process to another so this is also one of the optimization challenges to minimize the dispatch latency